and you are listening to KAOP AM 1045, Seattle's hottest AM radio station. My name is Danny. I'm Joseph. And you're listening to Accidents on Purpose, uh, an hour-long weekly radio show where we cover every interesting thing that's happened in the Seattle music scene. And there's a lot of interesting things. And then we move to the Pacific Northwest and then all points beyond. Oh, yeah. All in the next 59 minutes. Uh-huh. Joseph, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing excellent. Uh, just today, actually, I was walking up Pine and I saw a fake political sort of like bumper sticker ad that said vote butt stuff 2016 and I thought that was uh, great and they have my vote that's all I wanted to say uh, more of a Bernie Sanders man but you know it, 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 didn't, it didn't say exactly in what like capacity because that could be for, no, for mayor yeah. senator no it just said butt stuff 2016 and I was like you know what that seems like the best option so far uh, I don't even know what what they're running, what their platform is. But. Is it the same flag as the uh, the, the ISIS, ISIS flag? Yeah, yeah. Made <laughs> from, uh, no, no, I know what you're talking about. Flag. Yeah. I hope that, that becomes a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hope that becomes a thing. Yeah, me too. Uh, Danny, how are you doing? Uh, not too bad. You know, uh, a couple nights ago, something I think kind of funny happened. Uh, I was leaving someone's house. It was about quarter to one in the morning. Uh, they live right on the like corner of an intersection. And a dude was running, like, north-south. And he was like, hey, excuse me, I can I ask a question? Hey, excuse me, can I ask a question? And there was this woman that was kind of, like, walking east, west to east. And when I realized that he was saying it to her, I was like, I was like, hey, man, why, why don't you ask me a question? And I thought I was going to be like, I want to step in and stop this street yeah. harassment. <laughs> he sees me, and he's like, oh, okay. And he starts running, <laughs> he starts running towards me. So it wasn't that it was a woman. No, he was, he was, yeah. like, he was like, hey, man, uh, do you know where I can buy some weed? <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> You're the worst person to and, ask for. I know, and I was, I was like, it's not happening tonight, man. I think you should go home. And I'm still like being like tough guy, like yeah, I'm stopping you're, this. You're in that mode. Yeah, and he's like, okay. And then he like he like jogs away. <laughs> but then, but wait, so then you misread that situation. I did misread that, but I'm still glad that yeah. it's that. Yeah, you know. no, but then so uh, then that was at the beginning of my walk home. At the end of my walk home, I'm over by like uh, Denny and Fifth Fourteenth, ready to go home. And this minivan with a bunch of weed leaves on it that says, like, <laughs> Kush or, like, Hush. Yeah. Which they do, like, weed tours of cities. They were driving, and the dude, like, leaned out to hand me, like, a flyer or something. And I was like, I was like hey, go fuck yourself. Because yeah. I don't, like, five minutes too late. Because it's, like, one in the morning, and I don't, yeah. I don't think you should be handing flyers to people, like, hanging out of a minivan window. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, that is, like, a sketchy time to be yeah. active in your business. And, uh... I told I gave him the finger. I told him to go fuck himself, and he got really mad and was like yelling at me the rest of the way that the car was really? driving away. Really, just chill out. I didn't smoke some weed. I didn't think to say that. Yeah. I should have said, "Hey, man, why don't you get high off your own supply and calm down?" <laughs> uh, but two people who really should have crossed paths, yeah. both accidentally crossed paths with me, oh. and they both were more upset because of that. Yeah. Speaking of drugs, uh, we have uh, two guests in the studio today. Uh, they are half of the band uh, Steal Shit, Do Drugs, or SSDD on many flyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourself and say who you are and what you do in the band? Uh, yeah, I'm Kennedy. I sing. I'm Pete, and I play the drums. You sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can sure verify. Does. For the listener, <laughs> I can verify both of those things. Uh, he made them do both of those things before <laughs> yeah, they yeah, 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 when it came out, I was like, I don't know. Yeah, we had to, to set up a whole yeah. kit. I had to bring a different microphone. That's right. <laughs> and I've even seen you live, but I was just like, I don't remember. You guys even tested his like vocal range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, let's hit a high C. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which is just, uh, that's yeah. my range. Yeah. Uh, or yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you would you guys consider yourselves a super group? No. No. Uh, <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. Uh, Danny like, loves super groups. So yeah. If you want to get on his good side, I would say yes, but I understand. Every band that I know then in Seattle is a super group because they've all done previous bands that have had the That's a good point. And it's like. Yeah. It's just because, like, you know, you've done bands that people like or, like, on a local level or whatever. It's like. Not a super group. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's not like, uh, I think, well, Pete is in a couple bands, like the Fancy Lads. Currently? Kimberly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kimberly plays in a few bands. Universe she plays people. in I Universe just saw them People. Today. They were fantastic. Oh, yeah. the Kill the Keg thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. go to that. Um, I forgot to go to that. I really wanted Neither to go to that. Neither could I. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. 
Um, but like the other, like me and Erica aren't in another band. It's not like we're like, this is our side gig to make some money, like yeah. rocking out. And how like, much money would you say SSD has made so far? Yeah. <laughs> uh, least, Sorry, I left off an extra We have that. made, six figures. SSD is a straight edge. I know, yeah, <laughs> SSD <laughs> control. Yeah. That's why every time I see your name, I'm like, SSD, oh, D, yeah. yeah. I like that a little bit yeah. because like, a lot of straight edge guys are like, oh, like SSD. I'm like, no, yeah. I mean, steal <laughs> shit, do drugs. And they're like, oh, And then oh. they get super mad. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, yeah. that's happened a couple no, times. I like that too. That's you, you know, uh, but like, we've made four hundred and thirty dollars yeah. <laughs> so far in the life in the of the man just around. Yeah. Ten dollars too many in my yeah. opinion. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> so, uh, oh no! <laughs> now, okay. So, would you? Would it be Fucking fair to? <laughs> would it be fair to say that though that this band kind of got together after Monogamy Party fell apart? Yeah, actually, Wait. me and. Pete. So, oh, wait, so Kennedy uh, used to be the singer of Monogamy Party. Oh, Gary's holding up their record. Let's hear a song. Woo! <laughs> there we have it. There we have it. That was a song. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, actually, me and Pete worked together. We used to work together. And uh, both our bands, like, at the same time, were kind of not doing exactly what we wanted or yada, yada, yada. Or dissolving. Yeah, or dissolving. And um, we, while Monogamy Party was actually still a band, me and him were like, let's put together... Um, you know, a more punk thing, like a, than what Monogamy Party was, which it turned out to not quite be a more punk band. But we were like very like into like Pussy Galore um, and the Stooges, and wanted to do something in in that kind of a vein. So we we started like trying to find like the people to play. It's really hard to find people to play. In a band, just who like can rock, like in a rock and roll band, that's, yeah, but who can like, like hang like and do too. it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 And so then you were listening to uh, Duchess of the Duke record, and you're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I just found out that yeah. she was in that band too, and I was like, that's a very different band. Yeah, than well, SSCD. she's played in like thousands of bands. She's been in yeah. like so many garage bands before oh, Duchess and yeah. the Duke. And, like and Duchess and Duke started because they did a band called the Flying Dutchman, where she was the Duchess and played keyboards and oh. sang backups and it was Jesse Lord's you know like and she was in the intelligence she was in rotten apples like she was in a bunch of just like straight up garage rock or punk bands and surf bands and stuff like that like Kimberly's like yeah she's I know it's so weird when people like as far as like Kimberly goes just like oh yeah Duchess and the Duke folk rock she like and it's like which is understandable I mean it's understandable but it's also like no I hear it's like she likes rock and roll yeah you know? yeah uh, but anyways, the well, formation you, of the band. Oh, right? yes. Well, I was going to say you guys do a good job of channeling the Stooges. I'm Thanks. Oh, thank yeah. you. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. It's my favorite band of all time if I had one. you know. Yeah, not a bad pick. Thanks. <laughs> uh, when we were first getting it going, like, I was, um, like, st- started not playing in the intelligence anymore. <laughs> uh, basically, like, Lars... I feel like, like there's a lot of musicians who have that story. Who have started oh, yeah. not, not, playing not playing in the, playing in the intelligence. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, Lars, like, he's... It's, like, it's always, like, a collaborative effort. Like, that's a really good way to put it, and it's a very truthful way to put it. Like, he... Um, I just saw him tonight, actually. He mm-hmm. was at the show. Um, but, uh, yeah... Basically, a lot of people played in the band. I think I was like the eighth drummer or something like that. But he needed somebody that was a little closer proximity. He lives in L.A. And um, so he gave me the boot, which was just fine. It's his band. Um, but then at the same time, Monogamy Party was dissolving. 
and me and Kennedy started hanging out real hard all the time and um, just bummed on our bands. <laughs> <laughs> Two dudes bummed on our bands. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what are we gonna do? <laughs> but we were also just like talking about like you know the different things that we like what we would do differently in our next project. And we were obviously in an agreement about a lot of stuff for how to run a band and like, like the kind of music that we liked also. And then we were like, let's just get together and start fucking listening to records. And like, maybe we, I was like, we should play together. Let's do a band. Who knows what happens? Yeah. You're, I'm, you're a singer. I'm a drummer. And neither of us play guitar. So we're going to have to figure out somebody to like write those parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that actually is interesting. I know. We actually, from. we asked, we asked somebody who I won't name names. But uh, we thought it would be cool to play in the band. We asked, actually, we had a lot of people who were, like, we talked to um, probably, like, I mean, 10 yeah. different people a who we talked to before we found, like, our actual, like, before we found Kimberly and Erica. Um, and we, like, asked this one person, and we had ran into her at where we worked at Stumptown, and we were like, hey, uh... We hit her up, like, on, like, a Facebook message. I'm like, we're going to start this band. It's going to be called Steal Shit, Do Drugs. It's going to be, like, drugged out, minimalist, rock and roll. This is what's up. And she was like, okay, yeah, well, I'm kind of interested. And then we ran into her. And I was like, oh, hey, yeah, we messaged you. And she was like, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then yep. we were like, yep. that's confirmed. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. got the message. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we were like, cool, well, you know, like are you interested? And she was like, well, what, what do you guys want me to do? And we're like, well, preferably play the bass or guitar because I'm pretty sure he's going to bang things on the drums and I'm going to write about my feelings in my notebook and then yell about them. Uh, so we got those two parts of the band yeah. covered and she was like, well, what kind of equipment do I need to have? And we're like, I don't know, and man. Air? It's a rock and roll band. Yeah, like, yeah. it's a punk band. Like, you need, I don't know, maybe a distortion pedal. Y right. And she was like, I don't have enough, I don't have enough pedals for what you want to do. And well, we're you like, don't what do you yeah. You could have, like, a like, DS-1 on that yeah, yeah. shit. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And then she was like, so basically, you're just looking for somebody Ugh. to write all your songs for you. <laughs> no. And it was just like, I, we, like, me and Pete were like, it actually was like, Kind of weird because there's upper level sometime where the cafe was and the, there's employees area downstairs. People can go down there too. And we were both like... People. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Humans I'm, I'm, are I'm, Excuse allowed. me. Uh, patrons, as yeah. they like to call them, the business. They're never a customer, always a patron. Well, um, I feel more like a patron when I go in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't patronize Not a guest. Me. Don't Not a guest. guest. You're a patron. Oh. Uh, but no, so then we were like, okay, cool, we'll see you. We went downstairs and we had this like... We both like had like a like a about maybe like a ten second moment where we were like, "Are we just totally crazy for like being a drummer and a singer trying to put together a band?" Like, and we kind of both were like, "Uh," and then we were like, "No, that's fucking bullshit." Yeah. That's what we're we know we're doing. doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like she's stupid, man. I love reading stories about like the Dead Kennedys and Jello Briafra just wanting to write songs but not knowing how to play things so he would just hum things to the rest of the band and they would have to yeah. Well, he, had a yeah. Tape, he had a tape recorder oh did he yeah, yeah. You know, he actually would hum it into a tape recorder so it's like him like he was a guy who was like I want to be a songwriter but he can't play anything yeah. so, I can't play anything uh, either yeah. so I, it's been done before it's not yeah. crazy so if you were that person that didn't want to join SSDD email us at <laughs> access on purpose podcast at uh, gmail.com and tell your side of this Stumptown uh, interaction that person plays in a really good band actually <laughs> so now you've only been a band for what like is it like nine months or we've been playing yeah. out for nine months yeah since November I guess so I mean, but we like Kennedy and I first started yeah. putting this together like a year and a half ago a little over a year ago yeah, yeah. something like that <clears throat> so now between the first like couple of shows and now has your sound changed or is yeah it definitely yeah totally how, changed how so <laughs> well like at first it was like I mean, we. So Erica usually the way the the songwriting kind of usually goes is that Erica. It started out. Erica was like, "Okay, I've got this idea for this song," and so the three of us kind of got in there. It was before Kim. It was like we had two practices without Kimberly, um, 
or something like that. And then we like asked her to do it. But um, Erica was like, I got an idea for like two th- or three things. So we started kind of working that out, and of course we're stoked or whatever. And then we asked Kimberly to come in. She comes in, totally changes, uh, just as far as like, she's a fucking very wise like musical mind. She's like knows. Can you say fuck on AM radio? Fuck. Oh, we have a special license. Fuck the FCC. Fuck them, man. Um, anyways, long story short, basically. And, and, like, and w- uh, we're going to get back to swearing because there's something I want to say about that, but continue. Okay, well, fucking <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Yeah, like, at first, I think the first song we wrote was a song called Silence, and it's li- it's like as cavemen meet, and it's like, boom, boom, bam, boom, boom, bam. Like, it's, uh, it's really just caveman, sh- caveman shit, but... Um, it's good, caveman. It's yeah, really good. Yeah. Yeah. SSDD, good caveman. Yeah. Good slogan. Unfrozen caveman bass player. Yeah. 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 It was literally like, you know, I think Erica just was like, we should just do something like this. And like, and we all just like piled on. And now that is also happening at times, but there's just more thought that goes into it, I guess. Uh, I'll say like. Songs are getting more gooey too. I feel like. Ooh, describe gooey, gooey, gooey for gooey. me. Uh, like, you know, like Michelle or Whiting Tennis. Um, all the songs right now are also <laughs> named after people. Like I'm like I'm like shit talking everybody <laughs> right now. So I've got a song named Michelle, then a song named I'm Tickled Whiting Tennis, and then we've got a new song, uh, 15 mg, 15 milligrams. Um, and they're just more like they're less like punk, but more in that like. No wavy rock and roll kind of gooey driving like beat to it where it doesn't need to be like, dun, 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 yeah. you know, it can mm-hmm. be like the riffs can kind of like. So you feel like you're finding your sound. Yeah, yeah, that totally. Is a little more yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like any band that starts out, the first couple songs of theirs, like even if they're good, they may not be their sound. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. And then as yeah. It, it evolves naturally, which sure. is the best. Right, and we have a tape coming out of like our you know our first five songs and it sounds very much like when you listen to like early bands like you know like i'm not the hugest fan but like you know like those early like fugazi like demos and you see them eventually kind of like grow into like what they're doing you know what i mean like like these five songs are all very different Mm -hmm. um and they're all good or well they're all good. <laughs> <laughs> they're all fucking good. <laughs> but like they're, you know, they're all very different and I think we're kind of more finding what exactly our sound and our niches are. We're also like um, spending more time on the like the finishing touches. The minutia. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very Is, well put. Thank you. I like to put things well. Uh isn't that tape coming out on Help Yourself Records? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Are yes, you guys gonna do a release show for that? Uh yes, yeah. Are. Uh, we're playing July 15th at Spin Cycle. It's a free show. Oh, 3 2 Broadway. I actually have flyers for you. The best oh, you do? You right actually now. have Oh, right, dope. Right cool. Good. The top oh, record store in the that. city also, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Note that. Top record store. Uh, not one. according to the Seattle Weekly. <laughs> oh. Well, well, let's Seattle Weekly. Uh, yeah. Seattle Times. Don't, sorry. Don't, Seattle don't let us say it. Uh, the Seattle Times <laughs> did for Record Store Day. They did the top ten record stores in Seattle. We did not make the cut. Really? Oh, man. That actually, is surprising. Genuinely, because you guys have amazing and, stuff. But then again, it's the Seattle like, Times. So yeah. Sure and then yeah, I can't make the cut. Well, I bet yeah. they Google they did, record stores yeah. and just take the top ten. Like they don't care. Well, we pay Google a lot of money to come up high in the searches. Oh really? No. Oh. We don't have any fucking money. I don't believe anything. Have you been in the store? Like, <laughs> we don't have money yeah, for paint. That's why yeah. the store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's because all the money is going. Google. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should note that we just did an interview with Kelton Sears, and he's a lovely, lovely young oh, man. Oh yeah, he was on the podcast. Yes, he was. Oh yeah. cool. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Then never mind. Fuck the fuck yeah, Seattle. Fuck, you, fuck Seattle. <laughs> 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 I, saw, I see him like Times. once a week. Like, uh, uh, Times. Uh, that did it. Yeah. Oh. I, I miss said the weekly. No. Oh well, my friend Jeff Albertson works for Seattle Times. So fuck Jeff Albertson. Fuck Jeff. <laughs> also, congratulations on your. Wedding, Jeff. New marriage. <laughs> yeah, he just got married like last yesterday. week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are there any publications in this town you don't have friends with? I feel like, <laughs> I you're, I feel like you're tied into the, the publishing industry here. Well, I just got, I've been around for a long time and I don't make enemies. Who, who, who do you, well, actually, I, I got some evidence to the contrary. But uh, who do you know that works at uh, Real Change? 
Actually, no. Real change is the only thing Danny reads. <laughs> yeah. It's so cheap. It's one dollar. Well, they did put Spin Cycle as weeks. the top as the top record store. So well, that's why. Yeah, it's because we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we let him use the bathroom. Yeah. So. <laughs> we also are in your apartment right now, which happens to be a cardboard box. We're in a, out in a, we're in a fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. studio. We, we, we are <laughs> in. I'm literally <laughs> sitting on a Teletubby beanie bag <laughs> chair right now. It's a plush it's crazy studio. in yeah, here. It's yeah. garbage. There's like Britney Spears posters <laughs> all over the wall. <laughs> we are in a st- we're in a studio, and on top of the roof is an antenna yeah. pumping out 101 watts of power. 101. Um, wait. Oh, I saw you guys uh, open for Ice Age at Numo's. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. No, I didn't, oh, no, I didn't see it, but I saw that you played. I couldn't oh, go. Oh. I, I, I read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I read about it. Uh, now we I feel weird. That show. I, was like, I was actually like, good, because that was our first good show. <laughs> I, was, I, thought, I just thought that was really exciting with you guys being on Help Yourself now and having a tape coming out. Yeah. And Ice Age is a big band. Like That's yeah. an awesome opportunity for you guys. Yeah, sure. and we're really stoked. And like, I've, I've liked those kids like their music for since they came out I remember when they came out like everybody like I remember being on tour with Monogamy Party we just listened to that first Ice Age record like over and over and over Yeah. and then like they came out with their last record their third one and it's like total Roland S. Howard Nick Cave core but like angsty and like not like it's like Nick Cave core if it was not f- like fronted by a dude who likes to go to strip clubs and fronted <laughs> by a dude who likes to like Who's like, I guess I'm getting a little older now, but yeah. you know, which is really cool. And it's also our bass player's like favorite band. So yeah, it was very cool to play with those guys. And it was also very cool because like they get like they're a rock and roll band now. And like they get the idea that like rock and roll doesn't have to be like you know, boring. Yeah, or and also super n- loud. No, no, no one can see you play an air guitar. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was it really was that was that was a guitar, yeah. na, 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 yeah. you know, like it doesn't have to be like dad bar rock, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, like it can have like some real edge to it, but it also they do it in such a sweet spot where it's not the, the dude's not like screaming his head off and like talking about cliche shit and right. like it's like. They, they just do it really well. You know? uh, a band, like, growing up for me that showed me that rock and roll, like, I'm doing air quotes for the listener, like, regular <laughs> Nobody rock Nobody can see that. Yeah. <laughs> you sound just like Danny. Yeah. yeah, I know. I've been working on my name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was like, for better or worse, was the Murder City Devils. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. for me, it was, because they were definitely, like, they had a punk ethic, sort of. Yeah. But it was like a rock band. But they're a rock band. Yeah, but it wasn't boring. It was exciting and dangerous a little right. bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, that's, I'm flipping off Danny because he's giving me a weird look. Uh, <laughs> but I accidentally said someone was flipping us off, and I said they're fingering us. Yes, last I episode. remember. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was like, he was like, Lisa, why are you fingering us? No, 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 no. <laughs> and Lisa was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're fingering me. <laughs> <laughs> She she was fingering Brian. Yeah. She, she was giving <laughs> <she's laughs> Brian the finger. And then he's obsessed with fingers. Yeah, and I just said, I, want, I know that. I, I was like, I just want the listeners to know that there's some fingering going on. Yeah. And I was like, Give him the finger. <laughs> oh, man. That, 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 that seems like something where, like, someone who. Doesn't speak English too well. I'd be like, I I was walking down the street, the men fingering me, fingering me, (laughs) (laughs) fingering me over and over again. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, back to the question: Rock and roll is dangerous, and Ice Age is awesome. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) How is their English? Um, Well, are they talking Iceland? Where are they from? Uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen. I'd guess because Ice Age. We probably talked to like two of them. Uh, the singer. I talked to all of them Rick, because you know, I only uh, talked to two of them. I had the drugs. <laughs> uh, uh, but Elias, the singer, was very like uh, he was pretty outgoing, really nice guy. But he was also like hung over his shit when we saw. They him. were all. They were just like, they were done. zombified. Yeah. They, they're on the end of like some six the, week the, tour. They did that affect their show? Three days no, left. No, 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 no. no, no. Well, they're just professionals. Yeah. Their, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They absolutely killed it. They yeah. were so. Yeah. Good. They saved all their energy for that like hour. Show. That, yeah, 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 and then they went to bed. I mean, that's all well, they went got. to the cha cha. No, exactly. <laughs> but like, that's all you got when you're on the road. It's like yeah. shit. You just show up and do the same thing. Hurry up and wait, and then 
like then you get to play every yeah. night on tour and that's the fucking best thing so you could see that that's they were in the throes of that for sure oh, and they cool. had two like one or two more shows before they went back to Europe and yeah he was like I'm done man I'm like <laughs> he's like I got two weeks in New York with my friends I don't want to be on tour yeah. you know like so <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So I have a really, um, I feel like, obvious question. What's the uh, biggest thing you've ever stolen? <laughs> What's the biggest piece of shit you've ever stolen? <laughs> hmm. Let's see. I got caught shoplifting when I was 12. Ooh. I was stealing, I stole a football magazine. <laughs> and I like, oh, this is so stupid. I like... <laughs> So I grew up in Auburn and up oh. on the South Hill called Pigly or Pig Hill because there's a Piggly Wiggly grocery store there, which weirdly like <laughs> I that's didn't even not, know those were in Washington. Yeah, I thought they were just in the South. I mean, well, like people always tell me that they thought they were just in the South, but I like grew up down the street from one. And what a fucking weird name for a grocery store, that's anyway. Weird, yeah. uh, but I used to shop with so much shit from there because I had like this big leather coat and I would walk in there and just like grab all this candy. And they didn't care. It was funny. Things that 12-year-olds steal. Yeah, it was the 80s. Like, nobody gave a shit. Uh, <laughs> like, nobody cared about anything. Listen to, I don't know why listen to Walkmans yeah. and be like, I don't care. Yeah. It's the 80s. People it's just be like, ah, it's the 80s. Seriously, I'm so distracted with all this new media, like yeah. Walkmans. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm, beta, beta Max. Anyways, go. I went in I'm and... Uh, I was like looking at this man. magazine and there was this man standing next to me and he was flipping through a magazine and I remember exactly what he looks like. I was looking through it and I just closed it and walked out the front door and then he walked out a different front door and he goes, hey kid, excuse me. And I was like, uh, yeah. And he's like, what do you got there? And I was like, um, a magazine. He's like, uh, I'm a cop. I just totally saw you take that he's like an Jeez. undercover cop like, <laughs> was he really like any adult could have said that to me and I would have been like okay <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me too yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but like he actually was he showed me his badge he took me in the back room I was so embarrassed oh shit why should he give a shit and honestly I haven't he's stolen blue. a thing <laughs> Wait, really? the rest of my life I've been so like even when I go into stores yeah. I almost want to be like here's my stuff <laughs> like here's my receipt <laughs> I'm not stealing anything like I learned to total it my mom like let me have it so hard like yeah <laughs> Kennedy? Uh, I can't even, like... I guess we just do the do drugs. <laughs> I mean, I, also, I just... I, I like that you're encouraging others to steal yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, genuinely. I mean, I normally, I just go to QFC, stack my, like, <laughs> bag with, like, the pre-made sandwiches. Yeah. And then I always get one item to buy. Oh, to yeah. To make it look like... No, you gotta buy item. something. <laughs> right, yeah. one thing. But... I mean, I can't even remember the last time I've stolen anything besides you stole I stole chicken. a I, I stole wonder. a house plant last weekend. Nice. <laughs> Just to uh, decorate, from a, from you house to decorate your apartment? No, somebody was like, oh, that's a nice house plant. And yeah. I was like, here's sure your house is. plant. <laughs> I once stole an amp from Guitar Center and brought oh, daylight. Shit. Dope. Whoa. Yeah. And that's I walked crap. it right out the front and said I'm taking like they knew I was walking out with it. It was I was really Good proud of that whole Ocean's Center. Eleven thing. And I once stole a flask from a house show that I was at from people I don't know, and I still have it. So I'm really sorry about that. If that was your yeah. flask, email us. If at you lived at Toy House in Bellingham in 2009, please email <laughs> us at Accidents on Purpose Gmail. At, uh, Wait, that was you. One time, Accidents on Purpose <laughs> Podcast at Gmail. Like one time on tour, we all went to 7-Eleven. It was like we. We're in Portland. We had like 11 people in the van. We <laughs> all went into 7-Eleven to get beer and food. And all of us bought beer and food like one at a time and we all paid. Could I get a and there was this big native punk guy who was with us <laughs> and he he was like he was the last person in the line and he just was like, I'll have a tostado and like a pizza roll and a like some chimichanga kind of thing and they <laughs> gave it to him and he just goes Cool, I'm taking this. <laughs> After we all had paid, and then just like they were like, uh, and just like walked out and got in the van with us. We we're like, oh, dude, that works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't imagine them calling. I mean, the, the dude was huge. Too. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I just wanted to know what the steel shit part uh, yeah. included because I felt inspired. Well, now that, okay, now that we're talking about your name, one thing that I like is that you know you have the full name, but then. On flyers, they'll just say SSDD because I hate 
when bands or venues put an asterisk. Like when they like you know mm. like they'll like have like I hate the asterisk. I hate I when hate... you see shows for like uh, fucked up or like yeah. uh, what's the other fucked band? Fuck buttons. Yeah, fuck buttons gets it all the time because they're like electronic, yeah. right? So and they only do kid shit. So it's all that stupid asterisk. Yeah. I, I hate that. And just a little bit ago, someone um, I saw they had it's a coffee mug, which I think they listen to the podcast, so they're probably going to be pissed I'm telling the story. Yeah. But they had a coffee mug with that like kind of like more or less famous John Waters quote about if you go back to someone's house and they don't have any books, don't fuck them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I really like. They yeah. asterisked it. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> yeah. If you're going to buy the mug, yeah, you're yeah. someone who doesn't care about yeah. it. Yeah. That's terrible. Like, you're yeah. going to buy so a John stupid. Waters quote, yeah, yeah. but you're upset that it's, it's a just John Waters quote about, like, yeah. one night stand. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and it's so You're stupid. a wussy. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> that sucks. Uh, and so, we're going to, uh, we have a lot of accents on uh, purpose t-shirts. Uh, for sale at our website yeah. that's totally functioning. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely real and we have all sizes for sure. <laughs> Thank you for your uh you just like asterisk support. like well, your name. Uh, so no, like, no, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not a like, swear yeah, word, yeah. but it's like well, I wanna make a t shirt that says uh, fuck asterisks, but then have the word asterisks have asterisks in it. <laughs> but the word fuck it still says fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good, yeah. Uh, so you can buy that at our uh, gift shop, yeah. uh, our digital gift Accidents shop. on purpose dot com backslash Gift shop. I can't say the word backslash. Because you just said it twice. I know. Oh, fuck. Just, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, besides uh, stealing <laughs> yeah, the shit and it. doing the drugs, Pete, you are also head honcho of Pizza Fest. That is correct. Uh, now, Pizza, Pizza Pete. Fest is... Pizza Pete. <laughs> Pizza Pete. Do you want to tell uh, Wait, our listeners about I, Pizza Fest? Wait, can I first tell the listeners that I'm currently looking at Pete's right shoulder <laughs> and there's a tattoo of a piece of pizza? Done by Shannon Perry. Woo! <laughs> All right, really? continue. Yeah. Uh, Wait, did you bring a piece of pizza in and be like, I want this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's still like steamy. I'm really <laughs> dedicated to the pizza that's, thing. That's pretty steamy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so yeah, tell our listeners what Pizza Fest exactly is. Oh, um, so it started in Chicago in, I think, 2009. Yeah. This That's is right. your sixth annual one, according to This is the yeah. sixth one, yeah. yeah. Right. Six and seven years. We skipped a year. but um, uh, So I didn't do it the first year, and I used to play in a band called the Coconut Cool Outs. We were on tour with Personal and the Pizzas. Uh, we did a U.S. tour, and it ended basically in um, Chicago at Pizza Fest. My fr- good friend uh, Brian Costello curated the first one and it was I think it was over like five or six days or something and like all kinds of Midwest bands played like so much good punk rock we played we were on tour with them and Tyvek at the time and um, we did like a week with Tyvek we did the whole thing with the pizzas and it like I said it ended in Chicago and um, then at the end of it Brian was like sent me Ruben Mendez and Lacey Swain who were my former bandmates in Coconut Cool Outs uh a email that was like we should have this happen in different cities every year and um so it should be in seattle next year you guys curate it so it'd be like a different friends of ours from around the country would curate it every year so we did it and it was really successful and really fun and brian foss was just like like gave us full access to the old fun house and was like amazing like we, were, we weren't sure what it was going to do, so we kind of like... Like, Brian gave us a deal that no club in America would give anybody on so something like it's that. it's been held at... The, it was held at the old fun house? Yeah, for three, for three years it was at the old fun house until the fun house... We took a year off, and then in the meantime, the fun house got torn down. Right. Um, but, uh... Some say because of Pizza Fest. Yeah. <laughs> we like, that was just terrible. Some say that was the final too straw. Too good of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, they saw the pictures of the pizza eating competition. They're like, that's disgusting. Yeah, I'm never going there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, so, um, we did that three years in a row, and each year it got more and more successful and more and more attention, and people were really stoked about it, and then... I joined the intelligence and we did like a European tour in like a late spring European tour that lit, that like kind of ended in the beginning of the summer. So I couldn't dedicate time to it and Ruben and Lacey were just kind of not into it. So. Wait, wait, hold on. Was, was that the tour that shit got stolen? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that yeah. You, like all your equipment got stolen, right? Not all of our equipment. Okay. It was in Rome and we got, man, this sucks. Our, <laughs> our fucking tour manager, Sam 
who is a, like the best tour manager or sound guy that you will ever have in your life. He was absolutely amazing. He, he and all of us approved parking our locked, loaded van in the middle of Rome on a totally crowded street, um, broad daylight, 11 o'clock in the morning, sunshine, it was beautiful, we we're gonna go see the Coliseum, and there's cops and tourists everywhere, it's like high foot traffic, Yeah, that there's no reason why you should not park right. your van there, you know? And we go, and we're having this totally emotional moment, the tour was amazing. We're standing in front of the Coliseum, like one of the most historic, beautiful, like awe-inspiring buildings that you will ever see. And Lars pulls us all in and he's like, this is changing my life. This is amazing. We're all like kind of misty eyed, just going like, this is incredible. We're all best friends, you know, having tour emotions. <laughs> and then we're like, let's go back to the van, drive to Florence. We're going to go play in this resort. And like, it was going to be amazing. And we walk up and our shit is total. <laughs> that is a weird form of karma that, yeah, I, that I've never heard about ever. Yeah, a reverse karma. Yeah, reverse karma. You're, yeah. Having, you're having too much of a good time in the universe. It's like, you know what? Yeah, yeah you know what? Uh, you're no shit. Yeah. You're not bad. best. Yeah. Friends. Sorry guys, yeah, yeah. you're not best friends. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna throw a serious curveball your way, but fortunately, like they didn't steal. So Dave had like a two thousand dollar guitar in there that was he bought. I think he bought from the guitar player in Yes or something like that. There's some crazy story behind it, but anyways, regardless of that, they didn't steal the majority of our equipment. They just took our luggage and we our computers. Dave Dave's computer had a lot of really cool shit on it. it was, uh, anyways, really good porn. Yeah, so <laughs> rare porn. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a fucking bummer. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Are you guys? Oh, wait, so, because I saw you play when you uh, played uh, Numos right after that tour. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because Lars kept bringing it up. <laughs> yeah. Saying, Why did you guys play tequila so many times? What the fuck was with that? Because it was such a curveball. Like, that. It was funny. It was yeah. funny, but. Uh, I mean, we just, like, one night we did it. We were listening to it in the van, and we were like, it'd be really funny if we did this. And I was like, my other, my Christmas band, Dancer and Prancer, we play a version of tequila, but it's Frosty the Snowman. It starts as tequila, but then it goes to that. And I was like, well, I already know the drum part. So it goes like this. <laughs> like, so simple and dumb. So we just started doing it, and people thought it was funny. I just want to point out that you said my Christmas band as if everyone has a Christmas band. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you know my Christmas band. Like, like anyone's the Christmas band. The one that band. I do as yeah. opposed to the one yeah. that yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, Dancer, it's like a surf-based mm -hmm. instrumental. Yeah, like, instrumental, is it? Yeah, like the Ventures yeah. Christmas record. Yeah. We do it every December. Number one Christmas band in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> voted voted on by Dancer and Prancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Voted yeah. on by members of yeah. Dancer and Prancer. Actually, it's just Santa said it was. So <laughs> yeah. I would say he's with an authority on the subject. Hey. <laughs> uh, back to Pizza Fest. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, so you've been doing it for a few years now. Um, Whoops, sorry about that. I thought I turned that off. Um, <laughs> it's Santa calling you like, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen told you I liked fucker. your band. You don't have to be going on AM radio talking about it. <laughs> Quit name dropping me. <laughs> um, so a few of the differences now than when you started doing it is that you do it at multiple venues. Yeah. Do you um, think that works better or worse for it? Well, I mean, last year was the first time we did that. And that was more out of necessity because Brian Foss was booking at the Highline and at the Two Bit Saloon, rest in peace. Um, and so the Thursday night at Highline was booked. <laughs> Somebody's getting fingered now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Thursday night at the Highline was booked, and he was like, Well, we can do this. And I was like, Okay, it's in Ballard, and that's weird because like, travel in Seattle is weird. But um, right now everyone in Ballard is like, we're sick of people saying yeah, that. Yeah. A bunch of us live here. Why were your bands just fucking playing? Yeah, we're like, yeah, yeah, Avenue yeah. Hill is not the end all be all of Seattle. Like, we're trying so to drink and go home. <laughs> yeah. like, I can't yeah. figure out driving at yeah. two thirty in the morning. Blame <laughs> Uber, man. It's <laughs> fucking expensive these days. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we did it there. The two bit was fantastic. They were so great, and the show was rad. Uh, like way better than expected. Um, anyways, this year. The idea was Jody had asked, Jody from Chop Suey had asked last year if she could be involved in it, and I was like, ah, the only reason is that I've got this insane loyalty to um, Brian Foss, and uh, so then this year it made sense to have it at both places because Jody is 
fucking wonderful and has like, I mean, before that club changed ownership and Brianna, um, Aaron, and oh God, I'm forgetting his name right now. I'm sorry. Um, the dude in the sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys, like, they bought that place and resurrected it and fucking made it, like, they gave it a really nice facelift. Anyways. And a little bit of a smell the first week or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but they, uh, I mean, they saved that club. Oh, and, yeah. like, that's a fucking rare thing in Seattle. Clubs go by the wayside and they never come back. And the fact that um, those guys had the wherewithal and the resources and the will to um, resurrect that place is amazing because everything around it is getting fucking torn down and torn up and yeah. it's all just new money and you know for better or for worse whatever cities change but all that they weed save money <laughs> yeah Uncle Ike's is buying yeah, yeah. Uncle yeah. Ike's is uh, yeah. Yeah. But they it's save, new Amazon they save that club and it looks fucking great in there and the sound system is incredible then also Funhouse El Corazon Funhouse fucking reopened like that yeah. who ever saw that happening you know like it's a good thing they saved the fucking clown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Instead yeah. Of like totally. bur- well, instead of like burning it the well, last night. Well, who are they going to sell it to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. Instead yeah. of like burning yeah. it the last night. Yeah. Pushing it to the road. And somebody <laughs> stole it once. Yeah. That was yeah. crazy. And then they got it back. Or maybe they didn't. No, they didn't get the same one they got a better one. one. They, they got, got a better back. clown. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Very so rarely is that phrase ever said. <laughs> yeah. They got a better clown. So I guess like the idea this year, one of the differences is... That I really, by de facto, I guess, uh, like, I'm stoked that we can do it in the two rad clubs that kind of got saved, you know, yeah. in Seattle. When everything is changing, everything's going the opposite direction, and we are able to, like, celebrate, like, people's fuck like, punk rock will, you know, yeah. like... That's fucking important, and it makes the city interesting, and it makes it better, and like it fosters art and creativity and all kinds of good shit. So, so now you do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Is the reason you do that instead of Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, because I never want to end a music festival on a Sunday when people have to work the next day. Mm. The last night should be the big, the biggest night, and then people can be hungover and go to brunch and fucking party their brains out the last night. I would agree that Thursday night is a much easier going out night than a Sunday. Everybody goes out sure. on Thursday. Yeah, yeah people go out because they're excited for the yeah. weekend. Even yeah. if they take yeah. it easy, like they're more Casual to Fridays out. tomorrow. Yeah. They're yeah. going to wear a yeah. t-shirt yeah. to work. Yeah. They're cool, Personally, man. I have Friday, Saturday off, so yeah. that works for me, so thank you. Uh, they, they can, whatever band's playing on Friday night, they can wear that t-shirt to work yeah. on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, 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 they don't have to change right. after, <laughs> before the gig. Chet, Chet, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm going to go see, uh, you know, the gazebos. Can't you tell by the gazebos t-shirt I'm wearing? Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say... And then, uh, the other dude's like, I'm in the gazebos. <laughs> I'm going to wear my t-shirt today. Don't have to change before I go load with my band. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to see just, you know, a fanzine that was all pictures of bands wearing their own t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> that would be just like throughout history, all over the A lot place. of Ramon shots in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah a lot of sure. Ramon shots. I think I think there's a lot of shots of Henry Rollins wearing t-shirts with black black flag t-shirts. Yeah, I believe The it. only time you catch him in a t-shirt is <laughs> <laughs> in a Yo! black flag t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, so I was, I was thinking that we'd run through some of the bands and you can just say why you booked them or something yeah, about them. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> you can say why you booked them? I mean, <laughs> well, because like like you like the band. It might be an interesting story. Uh, I was in a little bit of a pitch. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, for, first off, Pizza Riot. Well, okay, so Pizza Riot is... Uh, it's Cindy, who is Brian Foss's wife. I didn't even know about Pizza Riot. Yeah, they're like the opening band on the first night. Cindy is Brian Foss's wife. I've known Cindy for longer than I'm, maybe longer than I've known Brian. Um, we used to work together at this place a long time ago. I was actually her boss for a minute. Um, she's way into Pussy Riot, the Russian band slash art, uh, performance art troupe. And um, she wanted to do a pizza-themed Pussy Riot tribute band. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. And Brian, so to Brian's credit, in uh, Pizza Fest history, he like, um, in recent history. In, in, in the Pizza Fest <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pizza yeah. Pizza yeah. Award. Yeah. Pizza Fest yeah. Hall of Fame. Uh, he's never like really pushed a lot of stuff through. He always like lets us take care of the booking. But um, this year he was like, 
I gotta pull rank a little bit. It's like, <laughs> it was like my wife's got a pussy riot tribute band called Pizza Riot, and I was like, no problem. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's like a, such a mild way to. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah like, I was like, you mean like those play whenever? And he's like, yeah, like whatever, it's fine. So yeah, that's awesome. Bod, Bod is those guys are great. They're so that good. band is very cool. They nail down the Tame Impala slash intel or pff, intelligence uh, television Fuck the intelligence. <laughs> 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 uh, television slash Tame Impala thing. Young dudes worked really hard at their band over the last couple of years, and Lance Umbel is their bass player. We work together. We get along really well. That band rules. Those guys are so cool, and they're like, yeah, I love them. Like, Donzies? Donzies is our buddy Will. He uh, hasn't heard them, but they're... I no, think I, heard the, I heard some You tracks. heard them? Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. yeah. But like... He described it as he was like it's like Thin Lizzy ZZ Top. Oh, meets you were telling me Yeah. Don't they just drink like Malibu? They yeah. drink. Yeah, they drink. <laughs> they, the drink of their band is Malibu rum on ice, and in their songs, in multiple different songs, he'll be like, <laughs> like Will. Uh, he's a singer. He he played bass in Tip Pig and a thousand other bands, and he'll be like, We're going out tonight. We're drinking boo boo on ice. <laughs> and it was like the idea of ordering a boo boo on, on ice is Even my favorite. Also, Malibu is personally one of my least favorite forms of <laughs> yeah, alcohol. Yeah, yeah, around, totally. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, I just see the bottle and I think of like. Like dads on vacation. Or, yeah, dads yeah, on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or high school, school, too. Or high school girls. Like, it's like yeah, all high, school, it. high school women. Joseph, you're right. Uh, full, <laughs> full toilet. Full toilet. Uh, Kurt Block, you know, fucking Northwest music staple, legend, whatever. Like um, he is the singer of the band in the. And they are, I like, they're the best fucking band <laughs> in the world. They're so crazy good, and it's lit. Like. It's so hilarious. I've seen them probably five times. Every time, you're like laughing your ass off and also just going like, they are so good. And there's that like 15 second songs, 30 second songs, minute and a half songs, like all that just keeps getting longer and longer. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) but they like it's like this whole performance art thing that is just it's like perfect for Pizza Fest, you know. Mm. Heaters. Heaters is from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they're like. Their booking agent um, contacted me, Josh Iden, um, contacted me about a few different bands through CJ Frederick, by the way, who does Dazzle Sub gigs. That dude fucking rules, and he fosters. He does rule. We, 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 yeah, we've had we've. He was supposed to be on the show, and then we fucked up, and then yeah. he didn't return an email. But uh, hopefully, he'll be on the show. You got to have him yeah. on. No, man. yeah, we're excited too. Yeah, he's, he's been like, doing a fantastic job. He's like, yeah, totally check, those, check those, those emails, yeah. CJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's helped me so much this year with a bunch of different bands. Let's so just send him my way, and like, hey, this is my friend. You know, like he's. At, so awesome. Well, yeah, because uh, you said that in an interview that this year was like one of the first years where you feel that touring bands were like, we got to play Pizza Fest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, yeah, like some different booking agents from around the country have like, like contacted me and Jen Knight, who's my booking partner, um, who works for Suicide Squeeze Records, uh, she, like contacted either me or her or both of us and we're like, hey, we're going to have some bands coming through right around the time that you usually do that. We would like book our tour around that, you know, like give us the dates. So um, it kind of changed things in the sense that we had to sort of nail down like the hard date ahead of time. We were like, we should do that because these fucking agents totally want their bands to play, you know, and which has been like really good for us. So, so is it kind of bittersweet because it's like, yeah, it's good that people want to book the tours, but shit, we have to like be more professional Kinda, and, yeah, and like yeah, actually like, do yeah. a little bit more work. Yeah, for sure. And like, it's made it like a more of a, of a professional affair, but at the same time, like it's never going to be like too. The, the mm. biggest thing about it is that I see small festivals turn into big festivals, turn into crazy big festivals they forget about what's good about it. The fan experience, like not to talk like yeah. about total pro. <laughs> yeah, experience. I know. I'm like, it sounds but like he uh, just put a c- <laughs> he just put a cigar in his mouth and lit it with yeah. a two dollar bill. Actually, it was like a two hundred dollar bill that I actually drew out. Yeah, 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 he had a creative. <laughs> no, but um, like I hate going to like big festivals. I really actually do. I hate like being in the fucking crowd oh, yeah, and dealing with all that. You know, yeah, we all do. I, like, I hate, like, I hate... And the bands don't sound good, like, no, in my no. opinion. Like, 
Yeah. I don't know. And I hate fucking beer gardens. I hate like yeah. right, you got to go in and get this bracelet. Really, but that's if you the go only there, kind of garden I like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I like it when like they happen at bars. They, like, yeah, they happen yeah. at usual yeah. summer spaces, and it's just you know. Touchy. Yeah, agreed. Uh, childbirth. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, are we gonna run through all fifty bands of pizza? Twenty-two. Fest? We need to take a break. What? Oh, we'll, we'll, we got, we'll, we'll, we'll finish day one. We'll finish day one. Okay. So Childbirth is the last band of day one. <laughs> That's <laughs> baby. Childbirth. Uh, I mean, to me, Childbirth is a no-brainer. They're like, they're so good and like... They're more menstrual than you. Yeah, they're Yo. highly more menstrual than me. Um, the first time I saw them, my band Fancy Lads, I think we opened for them and... I just had heard like three of my friends had started a new band. I'd known all of them for a while and we're all buddies. And uh, then they came up and the f- I think their second song was I Only Fucked You As A Joke, <laughs> yeah. which is the funniest song I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. And like, yeah. And then they were just Also, so I feel like people have only fucked me as a joke. <laughs> I feel like I've been fucked as a joke. They, Sorry, said, they said in an interview that the biggest problem with that song is that everyone thinks it's about them. them yeah. Like everyone that they gave is like, that song's about me. And they're like, it's not really about anyone. It's yeah. just a yeah. je- like, it's a funny yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, has anyone ever fucked you as a joke? Uh, probably. I'm sure I'd it's happened. I'd fuck you as a joke. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll do anything I, for comedy. So. I know people have fucked me as yeah. a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's happened with me, but I think people have used me as like a confirmation that they hit rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay, tomorrow, like I'm yeah, really I only fucked you to get off of heroin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, I'm gonna really, really get my shit together because this is like. Oh. Wait, do you want? Do we have to take a break? Yeah, we need a commercial. Well, no, let's just keep going. Come on. Woo. Um, <laughs> I don't normally woo as much as I have. I've done two yeah. woos in this podcast. Woo like, boy. I don't, I don't woo. That's Maybe because Joseph Flair? fucked a woo girl last night. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Actually. Uh, <laughs> I actually have Patsy's no rats. Patsy's rats. We're uh, on th- so, okay. Uh, for people who just tuned in, we're going through all the bands that are playing at the, this year's late. Pizza Fest. <laughs> you're late. <laughs> uh, though, if you're just tuning in and you want to hear the rest of the show, apparently... Our studio has been podcasting these, and you can go to SoundCloud or iTunes. Yeah, you can subscribe on iTunes. You can download it, but I mean, the, the beauty of AM radio is why I do this. Uh, Patsy's Rats. Um, so, Patsy's Rats, every, every year there's usually like one or two bands that will be on tour with a larger band or something like that, and um, the larger band usually goes like, <clears throat> um, you know, like we're on tour with this band check them out and if they can play that's cool and this is so Christian from Mean Jeans who are the headliners for the Friday night show uh, it's his girlfriend Patsy and I think I'm not sure Girl how rats. long the band's going <laughs> yeah he's one of the rats he plays in the band um, he was like hey is it cool if like my other band with my girlfriend plays and we're like yeah of course I've known Christian for a long time he's a great dude and I love Mean Jeans um, yeah so I've actually never heard them because they don't really have music that they've uh, given us. You just trust them. I just uh, trust them. But they're uh, opening, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, good. I'm sure they'll be great. Yeah. yeah. I think I met Patsy before and she was like, rad girl, so. Uh, I know Gary's mad at me because we're going over on time, but a uh, quick story. Once, it was a long time ago, there was a fest in Michigan and Dillinger 4 was booked and huh. they were on tour with Scared of Shaka. Oh. <laughs> and, but the fest wouldn't let them play. Oh, wow. Even they're on tour. And so halfway through Dillinger 4's set, they're playing a song and halfway through the song they just keep holding the note and the three guys from Scared of Shaka run on stage wow. and they switch Way. instruments. And then Dillinger 4 runs off stage and Scared of Shaka played like four songs. That's oh, that's great. Then that Dillinger 4 came right. back yeah. up and then like picked up and started playing that same note again and finished the song. And like we have one more song, and they played their last song. That's and just like killer. Yeah, literally like That's snuck cool. them in onto the set. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. Who's um, next? Susan. Susan is my friend, um, my uh, very good friend Beth, who used to be in a former Pizza Fest band called Cowabunga Babes, um, with my buddy Mike Bova, uh, and it's like this band is very different. It's like. It's kind of like Dum Dum Girls-ish. Very like, you know, 
three ladies. They're all very beautiful ladies, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and they all to are all you ladies out there. <laughs> these other ladies are beautiful. They're very talented and are in like it's like you know great harmonies and stuff like that. It's like it's like a good like kick off to the rest of the night. I think it's like good happy vibes. They played in Seattle one time before, and like they were fantastic. Scrapper. Scraper. Scraper. They're from, um, so, okay. They're from San Francisco. They're on tour with, uh, I'm sorry, with um, Useless Eaters, who I have a couple of records by and had heard of before. I actually didn't know about Scraper. And then um, Seth from Useless Eaters contacted Jen, their old friends, and was like, hey, we're on tour with this band. Since then, I've heard them. They are just fucking rad, totally rad, you know. Good palms. Oh, gooch palms. Gooch. Oh, yeah. You're right. It's a two piece. They're Australian, but they recently relocated to Los Angeles. Um, I saw them about a week after Pizza Fest last year at the Two Bit, and I was like, "This is the perfect fucking band." It's like the Gories or like hmm. Demolition Doll Rods or something like that. Like so good, so much personality. Write great songs. Gazebos. Gazebos are a local band, of course. They're homies of ours. I've known them all for a long time, and. We just played a house party with them. They were just like, if that band doesn't, if they don't become the biggest band in the fucking world, then I there's something seriously wrong. So. And the singer gave you a pizza tattoo. That's right, yeah. Uh, I've seen it. Useless Eaters. <laughs> useless Eaters relocated to San Francisco from, I think, Memphis. Um, it's like Wire slash Gang of Four, and they just fucking destroy like oh that makes me genuinely really want to see them yeah, yeah you should check out their records like I've been listening to them non-stop and they are just they're so fucking good man great Mean Jeans Mean Jeans are like the new Ramones like that band is uh, they've been going for quite a while Coconut Coolouts used to play with them all the time that's how I first found out about them we played uh, at a place in Portland with them that's where they're from I mean all you have to do is watch the Stone to the Bone video on YouTube and, like, you get the idea. It is funny as shit, and they're also, like, like it's just a really, really good punk band. So that's uh, day two, which is Friday. Um, mm-hmm. Now we're on day three. Wolfgang, fuck. <laughs> fuck you, why? Like, I told you we were going to be doing this. I know, it's great. You know, even though I'm not doing it right now, I'm fingering you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Be my guest. I mean, <laughs> oh, man. Man. Uh, <laughs> Wolfgang Fuck. A turn. Wolfgang Fuck is my buddy Alex Means. Uh, is a bartender that helps me out when times are tough. Um, <laughs> is that a play? <laughs> Which is what a good bartender fucking <laughs> does. <Yeah. laughs> no, is that a play on Wolfgang Puck? Do I have that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? I don't think I'm just, it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dan's <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I love that yeah, I love dude. I love oh. you brought that up. He's like, I don't know who that is. I just made that, that connection. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, no, it's like really rad garage punk. And it's like... They're really good. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw them, I was like... This is the worst band I've <laughs> ever <laughs> fucking seen. And then about like a year and a half later, we played with him. I was like, this is the coolest <laughs> band I've ever fucking seen. That's awesome. I mean, their yeah. song, it, like the lead up to, they did a, one of the, or they the did Go the Back first to kill Bellevue? The, no, yeah. it was the, uh, the first kill. The, oh no, it was Bill, Go Back to Bellevue. They did the first kill the keg at Chop Suey when it reopened. We opened the show and... <laughs> They the his lead up into the song Go Back to Bellevue where the song's like, Where's the bathroom at? Like, you know, Bellevue moms coming in all wasted, like white girl wasted on white wine and at like nine o'clock or whatever. Just walking in and being like, um he's like, This is the only question that I fucking ever hear from these people. His lead up into that is just like it's fucking. They also bust into halfway through that song the chain from Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the breakdown is the chain. It really twists your. It, yeah, and you're man. like, oh, <laughs> it's actually really good. Uh, Bones. Uh, Bones is from Chicago. Um, Home of the Pizza Fest. Yeah, totally. The genesis of the Pizza Fest. Yeah, the they one of their members is the guy named Nathan Johnson that was. Or that is the singer and keyboard player in this fantastic band called The Yokes that played at Pizza Fest, I think 2012, and then also the very first one. 
Um, there were this great like party band, like total kind of like '60s frat band, where frat in the yeah. '60s is a lot different than it is now. But less rape, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh my <laughs> god! You're, I mean, what? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> I just like it's it's I don't know. Sadly, it's succinct. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Uh, but they. Um, I kept hitting him up, like, maybe they played in 2011, because I think I hit him up again in 2012, and then last year, I was like, please come out. Like, they just started this crazy dance party, and they were built in the middle of the bill. He was like, well, we're not going to be touring this year, but this other band I do called uh, Bones is um, is going to be touring right around that time, and it would be really cool if we could get on the bill. Um, and then I... Again, Josh Iden, their booking agent, contacted me, same as Heaters. They were kind of like touring a little bit together, like meeting up every once in a while. Uh, and I listened to their stuff, and it's just fucking, they're great, man. Like, such a good band. And then I have that con- personal connection with Nathan, Nathan from playing past Pizza Fests. So Baus! I, oh, Baus. They were Baus the first band. Cool. Yeah, they're the first band that I asked. Um, I saw them open for Universe People, which our guitar player Kimberly plays bass in, down in the Bay Area. It was about a month after Pizza Fest, I went down there and Min Yi, who was in the A Frames and also. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, uh, I think uh, our listeners would be interested in knowing the first two A Frames records are being repressed. Yeah, that's right. seriously, that's, that's yeah, cool. which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, on awesome. SS Records. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Scott Soriano Records. Yeah, yeah. Um, Buy those records. They're fucking. They're fucking yeah, no, I definitely will. Yeah. That's great. Well, do you carry them at Spin Cycle or what's uh, going on? Half off on Tuesdays. Woo! <laughs> Three woos. God damn it! What the fuck? That's what happens. Woo! Woo! I want to be right now. Woo! Joseph, woo! woo! That's all. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Joseph spent his Fourth of July in Belgium. Wooing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he brought a woo girl home. Oh yeah. God! Right. What is wooing. my life happening? Or happening? <laughs> What is what my, is life, my happening? life happening? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me get, continue on yeah. Bouse just really quick. Uh, so I saw the band and was chatting up the bass player, Sierra, afterwards because they were just like, Min was like, they're so good. Um, and then they were. They were. It's like totally weirdo, angular stuff, but it's also got this like groove to it that's just rad and you can dance to it. Um, just kind of outsider shit, you know? Like it's fucking against the grain for sure. And uh, immediately, like, probably about a week afterwards, Sierra was like, I think we're into it. Can we get a guarantee? And I was like, yeah, totally. Like, something You reasonable. can get guaranteed to play the show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm definitely the main booker. Yeah, yeah you're guaranteed <laughs> yeah. to play. What else do you I need? love that. Can we get a guarantee? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so we've already talked about Steel Shit Do Drugs for a little bit longer than we needed to. Whoa. Love that, Be man. nice to yeah. the guests. You know, short, you know short songs? <laughs> yeah. They have short songs. They should have short Hey, I like short songs. Sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, Rick Wakeman, eat your heart out. Hey. Uh, Kurt, Courtney and the Crushers. Courtney and the Crushers. Um, actually, that's a band that CJ sent sent my way, and uh, they're like just a really fucking rad garage band. And I remember, so Courtney used to live in Portland, and she put on, she helped put on Summer Bummer, or no, sorry, Slabtown Bender, and Coconut Coolouts played that, and. At Slabtown, which is now no longer a venue, but Slabtown, I'd like to play. I'd like to play that. I've actually never heard of Slabtown. Oh, I'd like to play that little bit for someone's grandmother, so she'd be like, "I understand all those words, but not in that order." <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, were you saying Slabtown was a Seattle venue? No, it was a Portland. Port- oh, okay. Well, then I don't feel bad for never having heard of it. Yeah. Zigzags. Zigzags is um, a guy named Jed Mayhew. Is his? He's the main guy. Um, we played in the Intelligence together for a U.S. tour, and he was from Seattle, actually, or from Eastern Washington. But he used to play. In, he played in this band, this rock and roll band called the Catahoula Hounds, back in like oh, maybe 15 years ago in Seattle when I my first band was started to do stuff. We became friends back then, and then sort of lost touch, regained touch, or whatever. Uh, we sometimes on tour would very much regain touch. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, what a very much <laughs> regained touch. I would I would love for someone to send a text message at like two in the morning to like an ax me like, hey, do you want to regain touch? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, you're like, are you trying to finger me right now? <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that is because one time on tour uh, we were sleeping in the same hotel bed 
and he thought that I was his girlfriend while he was sleeping. Oh. I was sleeping next to him, and he like reached over and grabbed me. I was like, Jet, like, what are you doing? He's like, Oh shit, sorry. White mystery. White mystery is uh, Alex and Francis White from Chicago. <laughs> They are like. I didn't of, expect their last name. <laughs> so I, like, I was oddly taken off guard. That I don't know why. But they, um, I mean, they've been going at it for quite a while now. Are they hard? They're a hard touring, like garage rock, like hard rock band. Um, they are. They put on a fucking great show. They just released a weird movie that is fucking really, really cool, and they're wonderful people as well. Wimps. Wimps are. Never one of the of best fucking Congrats Seattle to Wimps. Congrats yeah. to Wimps. They just Kill signed to Kill Rockstars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're old friends. Like, like I'm, their new material is better than their previous it's real good. awesome material. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. fucking rad, man. They're Agreed. just killing it. Uh, nobody. Nobody is fucking, you know. I mean, I've known Justin for a really long time. And, like, that's the thing. Is like, all these bands, I'm, like, I know somebody in them just about, except for a few, but... That's kind of like how I... Or you've at least chatted some of them up. (laughs) (laughs) Come on. But no, I mean, nobody, like, he's been doing it for a long time, and it's been, like, I don't want to say it's a one-trick pony or something, because he's just a good songwriter, and, like, he does so much of it himself, kind of like Lars and the Intelligence. He just, like, he's, like, the centerpiece of the band, and, like, he kind of calls shots, has had a 100 people play with him in that band, and now, like... His new stuff, I mean, it's still, like, in the same vein of his old stuff, but some of the new shit is, like, has a weird, like, Gary Glitter feel to yeah. it. It's sort of big and bouncy. And less, like, less yeah. rapey. Yeah. Less yeah. rapey yeah. than Gary Glitter. I love talking about Gary Glitter and music. I'm sorry. This <laughs> is fucking good. Right? Yeah. You're not wrong. I just, like, yeah. it's a little tainted for me. Yeah. <laughs> in the recent. Yeah. Yeah. But also, I should note this. Um, the he now, doesn't rape people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The new drummer of Nobody is Brian Costello, who invented Pizza Fest. Oh, awesome. And Woo! He's an excellent drummer and cool. a fucking hell of a cool dude. So, uh, Awesome. So we are totally over time. Okay. Uh, one quick question. Uh, if they were going to make a, <laughs> a movie about SSDD, who would play you in the movie? Ooh. And what song do you want played at your funeral? Ooh, a two-part question that doesn't have anything to do with each other. Who? Do you want to take this one? Take it first, because I definitely have something. Yeah, well, if you, you have know, something, then you go. Cause okay, the music, the song at my funeral is going to be either one of two Van Halen songs, Unchained. <laughs> no, sorry. I hope, it's, Unchained. I hope it's Panama. No, it's either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, if it's right now, I'm deleting no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it. He doesn't either, know how to delete it. So it's either worry. Panama. Space bar. <laughs> it's either Panama or it's Little Dreamer. <laughs> Play, I like that, everyone crying but pumping their movie. fists. <laughs> oh god! Well, who would play me? David Lee Roth. <laughs> That's actually I can see. I, that. I can see that too. I'm totally on board. I think he would be too. Yeah, yeah. He's listening right now and is like, I, I hope they have a script. Oh, here. <laughs> yeah, I think he actually needs the work. I need to talk to my agent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he is listening, then you get a free three day pass to Pizza Fest. Yeah, yeah. he is a Google <laughs> alert for his own name. I uh, I'm sure he does. And we put transcripts of this on Google. I do. You just don't know about that. Kennedy, who's playing you in the movie? Uh, Michael Sarah. <laughs> no, I can't see Michael Sarah playing you at all. And uh, when, song at my funeral, short people, Randy Newman. Oh, <laughs> very good. All right, that's been another week of Accents on Purpose. It sure has. What a great week it was. Uh, I think might next week we might be off. Because I'm going to be at the Portland Zine Fest. Yeah, there's no way to tell. If you, No, there is a way to tell, because our guests... Yeah, we'll play it by ear. All right. Well, maybe it'll happen. Uh, if, you're at, if you're at the Portland Zine Fest... I'll fill in. But you have to play Danny. Okay. Okay. I don't like that at yeah. all. Yeah. Well, all right, I, okay. I have a spare pair you of glasses. <laughs> yeah. uh, keep one finger on the pause button, one foot in the grave. And fuck you for listening. Oh, and we're... Wait, 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 wait. Actually, hold on. You guys are playing a show coming up? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, not not to mention, we are playing at your store on uh, July, July 15th. 15th at Spin Cycle Records. But the very next night, Tape we're release. opening for some Heroes of Ours, Chrome from San Francisco. Oh. One of the best punk bands of all time. Yeah. 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 So we're in a show with TV is Eyes, baby. All right, here we go. Woo!